Welcome to another Demarcation Media Mega Constructs review. Today we have a very exciting video because we are going to be looking at the Ghost of Requiem. So this set is exciting for a handful of reasons. First of all, we are getting Halo 4 Marines with the removable helmet. So that's kind of a big deal. Um, we are seeing the return of the classic Covenant Ghost, which is kind of a big deal. There's some really new and interesting pieces here, which is also a big deal. And on top of that, we now see the full package redesign from Mega. So this set was sent to me by Ghost Reaper 018 over on Instagram. So huge thanks to him. I will put the link to his Instagram down in the description. Go check him out. So yeah, Mega has completely overhauled their package design. And I have with me the Falcon Sweep box because these are both Halo Universe. Uh, wow, I'm gonna have to zoom out. But I wanted to get a little bit of comparison here before we get the set open. So gone is the green highlights. Gone is the like background that's an actual scene. And then obviously this was a different layout than what we were used to seeing. Typically we don't get all the figures lined up here. We don't get the chief over here because this is Halo Universe, so it was a little different. Um, and it was a really cool box design. I really liked the Falcon Sweep box. Mega did a great job. But then they decided to change their branding from Mega Constructs with the orange to Mega with just purple. So to kind of go along with that, they redesigned everything. So no longer will we see like actual scenic backgrounds for the sets. It'll just be this kind of like forerunner... Um, I don't know, it's like the Forerunner ground and then just kind of some blue mist in the background or something. And I know a lot of you guys hate this box design. Personally, I think that this was a great choice on Mega's part because, you know, when you see this on a shelf with a bunch of Lego sets, this is not necessarily going to stand out from the Lego sets because Lego sets do the same thing, you know, with the background and all that the thing that would make it stand out would be the Halo branding. But this, when you see it, this almost gives me more like model kit vibes, almost. And it really pops when you put it next to other boxes. The gray, the blue, the fact that we have the purple mega thing now, we get to see all of the figures right there on the front. I don't know. It just, it's really clean and it really works. And on top of that, all of the gold is shiny, which I was not expecting. That also looks really cool. On the top, that looks really cool. It's like comic book poster kind of thing going on there. We do get a little scene on the side. It's the ghost on Requiem. There's one of the Marines. Get to see all the set there. We do get Chief on the side. It says Halo Universe. Uh, interestingly enough, Halo here is way bigger than the Halo Universe. Halo Universe is kind of tiny on, on the bottom. Um, and we don't, unfortunately, get the cool chief head anymore, but I'm, I'm okay with that. Then around the back, you know, we just get to see the weapons, which that's fairly normal. And then everything all lined up. We get to see all of the names. And then the dynamic stand. That's really exciting. So, yeah, I personally think that this was a great choice. I think that this looks good. It looks very clean. And it's going to set a very different tone for how mega sets are presented on shelves. So let's go ahead and get this thing open. Again, big thanks to Ghost Reaper 018 for sending this to me. I was actually having kind of a hard time getting my hands on this. I checked my target, everything. This, they just aren't really stocking extra. Like they're just, I don't know what they're doing. I could go on about it for too long. Okay, so I had heard people talking about this and it, is indeed true the figures come fully assembled interesting so we have that bag figure bag we have oh those look so cool that's bag two and then we have the instructions all right fairly straightforward instructions the back looks pretty much exactly the same as the box oh hang on it's like a big sheet oh no are they going back to doing this i don't like it when they do these big sheets it's kind of awkward 
Yeah, this is like Santa's list right here. What the heck? Okay, well, yeah, I'm not a huge fan of that, but, you know, it's, I guess it's fine. It's a minor gripe. So let me go ahead and get this built, and we will take a closer look. And there we go. Everything is all put together. There was no extra pieces at all, which is a little bit weird since Mega usually gives, or at least in the past couple years, they've given kind of a lot of extras. Also, the pre-built, pre I can't speak, pre-built figures are not without their flaws because this grunt came with his entire lower leg area built backwards. So he was kind of like that, which means his rear end is on his front. So I don't know if that's like going to be on tons of sets now. So if you got this set, you might want to check and make sure your grunt's legs are on properly. Otherwise, he might be running around a little bit backwards. So let's go ahead, start with the figures, and we'll start with this grunt, since he doesn't seem to want to go back onto his stand. It's been a while since we've seen a storm grunt in any sets or blind bags. So this guy is a welcome addition, but I have one really big complaint. The old storm grunts always, always had printed faces, and for some reason Mega has decided to forego the printed face. Now, I know all the other grunts, like the Halo 2 and 3 and C or whatever, they don't typically have printed faces, but the way that face, like that head mold is made, doesn't really need it, especially with the masks, but this really needs it. Like, it, it needs something, at least on the eyes, if nothing else, because it's so visible. I don't know. I, I think that they really needed to do the printed face. Um, other than that, he's a cool figure. I like the orange. It's a nice color. He's got a plasma pistol. And other than that, he's a fairly standard grunt. Again, you don't have to build him, which seems to be good because there's like the seam here is pretty flush where in the past you'd kind of have to push him really hard to get that, uh, get that look. Yeah, not a bad figure. I just really, really wish that they had printed that face. That would have been absolutely fantastic. Next up is Gek Lahar, and there is really nothing at all to show that this is Gek and not some random Storm Elite, which is a bummer for people who wanted like a Gek with a proper scar on his face or whatever. But for everybody else, this is fantastic because now we can army build Gek and just call them normal elites. Um, that's made even easier by the fact that he comes with the helmet. Gek didn't usually wear a helmet, so they show him without it on the packaging. But again, there's nothing to show that he is a named character. He's got some really nice paint apps, though. All the little lights on the armor go uh, the chest, the groin armor, the legs. Looks really good. Around the back, no print, but we don't really need it. The head is not printed either. It just has, you know, the speckles of the plastic. He comes armed with a clear blue energy sword, which is great. And he has the new hands. Personally, I would like to get at least four of these guys, you know, to make a little squad. And then I can have Gek meet up with his old buddies, Fireteam Majestic, have them duke it out. I think that's pretty cool. Um, he will not match with Julem Dama if you happen to have the Julem Dama figure, which is a bummer because I'm pretty sure, if I remember correctly, in Spartan Ops, um, their armor was all kind of the same color. Unless, of course, we happen to get a new Jewel Dama at some point in the future. Now, if they do that and update his armor color, then we'll be all good. Really like this guy. Uh, I was not really looking forward to getting this figure. I don't know why. It just, I don't know, the Marines took all my attention, I guess. But now that I have him and seeing the print and all that, he's really well done. He's a fantastic army builder as well, despite supposedly being a named character. Here's where the fun really starts, though. So, finally, we have the return of the Halo 4 Marines. And now, I know there's kind of a general dislike for this armor set, or this armor, uh, Marine armor type. But, personally, I really like them, especially the heavies. Unfortunately, we don't have a normal heavy helmet yet. I don't know if they will make a removable heavy helmet, since it's not, like, like you don't see their face at all through it. Um, so, first, hang on, let go. He comes armed with a Halo 5, Halo 4 BR, the kind with the scope already on, not with the attachment point. And then the figure himself is in this very bright tan, which 
Could have used some of the speckling in it, I think. It's a little shiny and a little bit plain. Um, he definitely could benefit from a wash and a matte top coat. I don't know if I'll end up doing that to this guy or not. And then the new helmet is the, the part that really is stand out. And I think it's got some it's got some ups and some downs. First of all, the major downside is the fact that it makes their heads big. That's just kind of unavoidable with removable helmets, especially ones that wrap as much as the Halo 4 Marine helmets do. So that's a little bit of a bummer. It makes them look bigger and bulkier. And then you put them next to an Elite, which is supposed to tower over him. And he just looks more imposing because his head is bigger. So that's a little weird. But I don't know. Again, I think it's kind of unavoidable. Um, the part that is avoidable is the way that they printed the lenses on the little goggle section. I think they really needed to do a bit more over the top to make it look like it actually is two. It actually looks like two separate eyes right now and not the full like face spanning goggle like it should. And that could be remedied by just simply making the gold go a bit higher. Um, so it's a little off putting when you first look at it. He the eyes look a little bit uh, buggy, but the more I see it, the more it kind of makes a little more sense to my brain. The print is nice. The weird thing about removing them is you kind of have to pull it up like that and then his nose gets caught and then you just kind of have to tip it forward like so. So that's what it looks like removed. There's a face underneath. Looks like the Nicolas Cage kind of face. I think we've gotten that guy before. Then to put it back on, you kind of hook it over his nose and then pop it into place. Not too difficult. He's got a little print on his buckles there. He has the really nice uh, brown printed legs. We saw those a lot on the Heavy Marines back when the Halo 4 Marines first were made into new articulation. And then, interestingly enough, the elbow joint is gray on this guy, which I think is pretty cool. He's got a backpack. The backpack does come on him right out of the box. So yeah, really cool figure. I definitely think it's going to take some getting used to, and I know some of you guys will probably just prefer the older style of uh, marine head without the removable helmet. And I definitely do like those guys. They look very, I don't know, they're, they're very angular and intimidating looking, but I definitely think that these guys have their place as well. And I'm pretty excited to see where Mega uses them again. So yeah, I just think maybe this guy could have used a wash. The second Marine in the set is kind of a Marine heavy, kind of. I say kind of because his helmet is the same. Well, it's the same, but like gray. So he comes armed with the Halo 4 5 rocket launcher. I really would have liked to see the smoke trail piece and missile be included in the set. That would have been great. But, you know, it's nice to get it even without. Um, the helmet on this guy, I like this. I like the way that they did a gray kind of strap on the sides and then the middle section. I think the eyes look better on this guy, the way that they did it. So I think maybe if they had just put a little black strap, maybe that would have fixed the bug eye look. Um, the chest plate on this dude looks fantastic. I love this piece. I love the print they've done on it. I love the fact that they're using the printed legs again. He's got the silver armor, got another backpack, no print around his back. Um, there are two major flaws with this guy. First of all, he has the thing where the hand wobbles. Now, I believe by the time this video comes out, my tutorial on how to fix that will be out. So you'll know how to deal with this. It's just, you know, it's frustrating that it has to be dealt with at all. And then getting this guy's helmet off is really difficult for some reason. I don't know if it's because there's a, it's a different head mold under there or what but you kind of have to like hook your fingernail on the strap. And because this helmet's slightly soft, you bend it so it pops off. Um, my man doesn't have eyebrows. What's going on? <laughs> he looks like he, he shaved a little too much and now he's very concerned about it. He's like, it's like, oh no, I shaved them all off. I don't know if he's supposed to have eyebrows or not, but he doesn't. And so that's a little weird. Luckily, you can just pop the helmet on and he looks fantastic with the helmet on. I like the fact that they gave the 
um, the darker skin guy, the silver armor. It just looks really good. So yeah, these guys are pretty cool. I'm I'm pretty happy with them. I definitely think, again, hang on, come back. A wash would be good. And again, it'll take some getting used to this new, like, removable helmet design. And again, some of you guys will just prefer the old ones, and that's perfectly fine. But for customizers in particular, this opens up a lot of options, and I'm, I'm pretty happy about that. I'm now even more excited to see how the Halo 3 Marines, uh, how they work out with the removable helmets. But yeah, aside from the quality control issue and some of the weirdness with the eyes, I'm pretty happy with them. Now, let's take a look at this ghost. So, the last ghost Mega made was, you know, it was alright. It was the Banished Ghost. They had some cool stuff going for it, but one of my biggest complaints was that, particularly in the seat area, it felt very unfinished and empty. So, they decided to just kind of overhaul the ghost entirely, and this is what we got. So, first... The biggest thing that sticks out to me is the fact that all of these pieces here and then the big middle section are printed with like hexagon metal kind of coloring. It's very subtle and it looks really nice. I think that was a perfect choice on their part. We got the silver guns. I'm a little disappointed they no longer put the blue in there. They used to like dual mode. Mo dual mode. Oh my gosh, I can't speak. There used to be blue in there. It's translucent blue. And that was cool. So that would have been nice to see that. But I feel like that's asking for a bit much. Particularly since this set has so much other printed stuff. So we've got more print here. We have print on the inside. It's not even... There you go. So it's like the screen for the ghost kind of I guess. And then we have this little printed piece for the fuel cell. And then we have these new lightning pieces. So they're made to hold the ghost up. Like so. They're kind of cloudy like that but they're also just a bar attachment which means there's a lot of possibilities for this so if you wanted to make yourself say like a custom thor or something you can have him holding some lightning um i don't know there's there's a lot of ways you could use this put it in mocks build your own ghost i don't know i think it's fantastic effect pieces like this mega please continue doing it give us some fire effect pieces i don't know it's, it's a great idea let me bring in the other ghost so you can see. There's the banished ghost. Again, down on the ground because there's no lightning. There you can see the really kind of empty seat. I think it just just the one slope did so much. There's also no like foot rest thing and there's no fuel cell. Whereas this uses a half of one of the warthog like machine gun sections, uh, the like armor paneling uses that as the footrest which is really clever um i don't think i could yeah i can't mount the electricity on the red one but that would be kind of cool this front piece is the same piece oh, I'm, I'm going out of camera here it's the same exact piece um just one has the banished armor plating on it and one doesn't you can see the peg hole and then the like ramp kind of i don't know what you call that section that you would attach it in so i'm glad to see mega reusing that I really like this, and I know from what I've seen, most of the community seems to agree that this is one of the best ghosts Mega has made yet, especially since it's a more classic Covenant one. Um, I am still not a big fan of Mega using this piece as handlebars. I think they need like a dedicated handlebars piece because this is a bit narrow, but we can have him on here. Like so. Look at that. That actually looks really nice. That works out really well. And you can have him kind of like looking down at his screen if you want. But he can look over the top. And the fact that it's just floating makes it really nice and dynamic. Actually, probably angle these a little more forward. There we go. And then, actually, I just realized to kind of pose it, you can almost move the things like that. If you want to have him doing like a hard turn kind of thing. At some point, obviously, it does get weird because it looks like he's walking. But, you know, just some some options there. Yeah, these effect pieces are fantastic. I absolutely love this. For dioramas in particular, there's so much more life in, you know, having the ghost 
be buzzing around on the electricity. Yes, very, very good job, Mega. This looks fantastic. Now, I'm sure a lot of you are wondering, how does this little ghost look next to the new Banshee? I think they look pretty good. They look to be the same base purple. It's just the Banshee has this dark purple, whereas this has more of a blue. So it's a little confusing to look at side by side. But you can certainly build yourself a little Covenant army with these two sets. You know, get a couple Banshees, get a couple Ghosts, and you are good to go. I'm really glad Meg is bringing back this original purple because the various shades that they did, there was like some blue, purple, and I don't know. There was a lot of different shades of purple, but I think this one looks probably the best out of the ones that I've seen. So I'm happy to see that they're bringing it back and being consistent with it so far as well. Well, there you have it. That is the Ghost of Requiem set. Gotta say, this is a really solid little set. Is it perfect? No. It has some flaws for sure. Um, the grunt face, the marine, especially this guy, he, the print on the eyes needed to be a little different. Um, and then obviously we have the quality control issue with this guy and the fact that his helmet doesn't want to come off. But overall, this is a really solid set. It's a perfect continuation to these four figure like army builders that Mega has been doing. And like there's a lot of good going for it. Even if you absolutely despise the new marine helmets, there's still a lot going for it. Particularly the ghost, like perfect. Mega, you absolutely knocked it out of the park. The effect pieces, the printing, the build, A+. Plus. Absolutely fantastic. The fact that the Marines have some extra print, more than what we might see, more than what we have seen on most of the Infinite Marines. Um, yeah, it's just, I'm, I'm, I'm impressed. I'm impressed. This was not what I was expecting when I first heard the Ghost of Requiem name leaked, but I would say this is pretty fantastic. Um, obviously you can throw in Fireteam Majestic if you want, if you've got them, you know, they can join the fray. That will be thematically correct. The fact that you can take the ghost and port it back to like the Halo 3, Halo 2, even if you wanted to, you could use it as a CE one. There's nothing about it that really makes it not work for using it like in the older stuff. So yeah, overall really happy with the set. I definitely would like to get at least one more once I see him in target. Um, I'll probably even get two more so I can do some weathering on the Marines, see how that looks before, you know, weathering my only two. So yeah, really a plus job mega. I'm really glad that the, um, the universe line is just, it's going really well. In my opinion, I think that they're making all the right choices so far and just really doing a good job. And I know a lot of people will disagree when it comes to the packaging in particular, but I think Mega is doing a great job. They're heading exactly the way they need to. And on top of that, they have started testing the Mattel Creations site to use as an online store. So the Banished Phantom went up for pre-order there, like a, I think a week ago now. Um, and they had like the Pelican and Arbor's Quest so th this is all steps in the right direction. And hopefully in a year or two, we won't have any distribution issues. You know, we'll be able to go online to the Mattel site and order, you know, order this set when it first comes out, as opposed to searching endlessly in targets and never seeing it. So Mega is doing a lot of great things. It's a really exciting time to be a fan of Mega. We just have to be patient. We have to be supportive and, you know, keep on with it. Now, that doesn't mean I'm not going to point out when things are weird because Mega, that grunt face is really ugly. Don't do that again. But I'm just saying we need to be careful not to just bash all the things they're doing wrong because I've definitely seen that, especially when it came to like the flood being revealed. There was a lot of really negative feedback right away before people even fully got enough information about it. I just think we need to be a little careful about that because... Mega's doing their best to give the fans what we want. And if we just, you know, rail and rant every time they give us what we want, but like maybe not exactly how we wanted it, 
they're eventually going to stop and they're just going to go back to what sells. So if we want to continue seeing them try and do the sets that we want to see, we have to support their efforts. So if you can find this set, highly recommend it. I think it goes between $15 or $20. Both feel like a fair price. $20 is a little steep, but you do get a decent bit. You know, got the four figures, quite a bit of printing, the excellent ghost. So if you can find it for 15 to 20, 100% get it. Any higher than that, probably wait until you can get it for a lower price. And then obviously, I don't need to tell you that this is a good army builder again. It's very obviously a good army builder. So if you can find it, 100% recommend you pick it up. And I'm really looking forward to seeing the rest of this wave. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and consider subscribing. And I'll see you next time.